Uh, Dr. Fine is a writer, community organizer, a family physician, and a public health provocateur. He is currently chief health strategist to Mayor James Yosa and the city of Central Falls, Rhode Island, and senior clinical population health services officer of the Blackstone Valley Community Healthcare Incorporated. He served in the cabinet of Governor Lincoln Chafee as director of the Rhode Island Department of Health from February of 2011 until March of 2015. Uh, and amazingly, even though he is highly in demand by lots of different organizations and many people seek his wisdom and his guidance, uh, miraculously, whenever I call, uh, he always uh, picks up the phone. And if not, he calls me very quickly back. Uh, it is amazing uh, how responsive and helpful you have been, uh, not only to me, but to our community as well. And so it's my a pleasure uh, to introduce you and to welcome you so you can give us a little bit of guidance as we navigate these uh, turbulent times. I uh, want to recognize that this week the percent uh, positive by week is now uh, above 5% and there were over 210 hospital admissions this week which is above the threshold and there were 535 new cases per 100,000 uh, of population uh, this week. I think we've all seen how the numbers are increasing. We've learned about some of the different restrictions and policies that are being put into place to try to uh, put our hands around the virus and to try to control it a little bit more. Uh, but your presence here this evening will allow us to have different insights uh, and figure out what is best for each and every one of us and for our families. And uh, if anyone has any questions and you wanna put it into the chat box, uh, you can put it in there and I'll help moderate the discussion. But without further ado, uh, I turn it over to Dr. Fine uh, and uh, what is it that people should know or be thinking about as we uh, enter Thanksgiving week next week. Oh, can you unmute yourself? Sorry, hold on. Uh, there you go. Try to, try to unmute yourself, go for it. Okay, how's that? Perfect. Thank you, Rabbi. It's a great honor to be with you and to see uh, many of you again. Um, we are in uh, turbulent waters indeed. Uh, Rabbi, you are ahead of me on most of the numbers, which I spend a lot of time thinking about. Um, but if I was gonna sum up where we are, I'd say that uh, COVID-19 is now spreading out of control in Rhode Island and in the United States. Uh, to make bad numbers a little worse, we had 1,280 new tested positive cases in Rhode Island in the last 24 hours. We have 284 people in the hospital. Uh, 22 of those are in the intensive care unit. We've had between four and eight deaths a day for the last few days. Uh, and I expect that that number will go to between 10 and 20 deaths a day. We've lost 1,284 Rhode Islanders so far. Um, unfortunately, I expect that we will lose uh, upward of 4,000 before this thing is over. Um, and things are no better in the United States as a whole. We've had 11 million, 700, almost 12 million tested positive uh, cases, uh, a 254,616 deaths, and we had 1,700 deaths just in the last 24 hours. And nor are things better across the world uh, we have had, uh, the numbers almost don't, are, are almost become too big to imagine, 56 million cases, uh, approaching 1.4 million deaths. Um, and we are probably just hitting the first quarter to first third of spread. Uh, the estimates are that about 15% uh, of Americans have been exposed to the virus so far. Um, and that means we have 85% uh, yet to go. The good news is that uh, the uh, progress toward a vaccine is very good. Uh, two vaccines are in late uh, third, third phase, uh, phase three trials. Uh, I think Pfizer finished its uh, phase three trial today or the last couple of days just announced it today. Uh, and so I, my guess is that vaccine will be rapidly approved and begin to be distributed over the next few weeks. Uh, Rhode Island is said to be one of four states that's gonna be selected for the study of how that distribution goes. Uh, but 
I think the best estimates are that somewhere between uh, 10 and 25 million doses will be made uh, available before or about the time of the first of the year. Um, and uh, that's half the number of people will be vaccinated because it's a two uh, vaccine series. It's a fairly difficult vaccine to handle as it has to be stored at 90, degree, 90 degrees below zero. Um, and it is unlikely that a significant, significant portion of the population will be vaccinated before next summer. Um, but there will be attempts to vaccinate people, remembering that we are in a nation without a healthcare system, so that we don't actually have a particularly organized or effective approach to vaccinating the entire population. We will do our best to vaccinate the people who want to be vaccinated. The other good news, I think, is that uh, the management of people who are ill with COVID-19 has improved markedly. Uh, when I talked to you in the spring, uh, we were expecting a 3% case fatality rate. Uh, that number was revised down to about 0.6 and has been revised down again to 0.45 um, so that though many people will be ill, um, you know, the deaths will not be as many as we thought early, but still way too many. Um, as I said, uh, I view the, the disease as essentially out of control. Um, we are seeing in Rhode Island, the doubling of hospitalizations inside of about two weeks uh, and the doubling of new cases uh, inside of uh, more like seven to 10 days. Um, and that means that three weeks from now, the number of hospitalizations will be doubled or tripled again, most likely, and the number of deaths will also be doubled or tripled again. Uh, but the good news again is that though there will be too many deaths, relatively few of us will become ill and relatively few of us will die of this illness. Um, still way too many. And the good news continues to be that it, the current uh, level of infection, mostly young people are most people are, young people are generally spared. Children are generally spared. Uh, that doesn't mean that there aren't going to be some child deaths and some of the deaths of young people, um, but the numbers aren't going to be that overwhelming for people under 50. As I said again in the spring, uh, the risks for people over 50 rise with age. So uh, for people in their 50s and 60s, uh, the risk of death from COVID is less than the risk of driving in your car. Um, but for people in their 80s uh, and 90s, the risk of death once you, if, should you get COVID, is about one in 10. Uh, that's kind of about where we are. I think the governor will be announcing some changes tomorrow, and I expect more changes to come. I think movement is going to be pretty severely restricted. Uh, I don't know what's going to be decided about, uh, about restaurants and bars, but my expectation is they will close within the next two weeks for in-person dining. Um, we close them in Central Falls uh, starting tomorrow already. Um, and I think the state will end up following fairly soon. Uh, and I think that we will go back to restrictions like we saw uh, in the spring fairly soon. Um, with different, we may have different names for them because I think we're trying to pretend that this is uh, that this is kind of different, but I don't think it really is. And so I expect that uh, many retail stores will close within the next few weeks. Um, and movement will be fairly severely restricted. Uh, and my guess is that will last uh, probably 10 to 12 weeks, depending on what happens and perhaps uh, even until springtime. Uh, most colleges are being sent home in the next few days um, and are not, most college students are not gonna be expected to return till the end of January. 
um, and whether they get back by the end of January is unclear. I mean, I think most in-person learning will end up closing in, uh, in Rhode Island over the next two or three weeks, uh, despite uh, valiant attempts by educators and by uh, folks in government to try to keep them open. Um, and the good news is that, you know, uh, that this isn't gonna last forever, um, that by next summer, we should have most people vaccinated who are willing to be vaccinated. And much of the, the intensity of the disease spread will be less. Uh, and I expect that by next Thanksgiving, we will have bigger Thanksgiving than we had this year, but probably not back to normal so that we will be back to normal with Thanksgiving by 2022, more or less. Um, I suspect that this is going to have a psychological uh, manifestation in the minds of many young people, similar to that that my parents carried from the depression. So I think for many people as they grow up, they will always remember this time and will be better at washing their hands than my kids were. Um, and uh, will be more uh, inclined to wear masks uh, if there are uh, moments of disease spread and probably a little more careful about uh, their personal hygiene. Um, it's about where we are. Um, so uh, I thought it was important for people to know where we are were before Thanksgiving. Do not think it's wise for people to travel. Um, and I certainly don't think it's wise for people to be in groups of more than a few. Um, remembering that you are exposed, the exposures you get or the likelihood of disease is not a function of who you're with today, but who the people you are with today were with themselves over the last 14 days. This is so transmissible uh, that the guy who fixes my cars, who lives around the corner and is a friend, um, but who doesn't split as much wood as me, um, but uh, he, uh, a customer dropped off a car for him to service. He got in the car, but nobody told him that somebody who had been in the car uh, had gotten the disease and then tested positive. So he got in the car after the person who drove the car had dropped it off. Um, and then he got sick and his family got sick. Um, his whole family, he, he picked it up from the car, and the air in the car and he spread it to his family. Um, thankfully, no one was seriously ill, but it's that easy to pick up and spread this disease. So why don't I stop for questions? So um, let me just turn this off. So first off, thank you for giving us this very sobering uh, check into what is going on at this time. Uh, I'm gonna give you a softball because I want you to hit it out of the park. Are you ready? No. So are you suggesting families who haven't seen each other in a long time, even if it's, surely you understand they haven't seen each other for a few weeks, it's been a few months and it's Thanksgiving, come on, Dr. Fine. It's totally okay for all of us to get together with family, correct? You're breaking my heart. Um, but the answer is it's probably not wise this year. Um, is a, you know, we're doing Zoom. We did Zoom for the high holidays. We're gonna do Zoom for Thanksgiving. It's gonna hurt. Uh, but uh, that's the way we protect individuals. And that's actually the way we protect the population from the spread of this disease. Uh, and I think this is one of those moments where uh, each of us have an opportunity to practice a, a, a new level of selflessness. Cause I think we would all wanna be with family. We all wanna be with our friends. Uh, but really if everyone makes a choice to take care of everybody else and all of us stay home and connect via Zoom it really makes a difference. Uh, for how the rest of the state is able to take care of the people who do get sick. That's right. Um, I, th I think many of us, I, I imagine that we feel that COVID is getting closer and closer, whereas maybe originally we didn't know people and it was maybe a, a friend or a friend. Uh, I know many of us are beginning to know people uh, in our families or in our friendship circles who are beginning to get COVID who nonetheless were careful and wore masks um, and limited their exposure to other people. Uh, what do you make of that? Or what do you say for people who still 
we know of stories of people who have been careful and they still got it. Uh, what is the takeaway or what is the response uh, to that, to people's experiences like that? This is a tough disease and it spreads remarkably easily. Um, many people uh, who have it, uh, have it asymptomatically and don't know they have it with no symptom or sign, but can still spread it. And it spreads in the air. Um, so the takeaway I think is be as careful as you can. You know, this is the time to be home, stay home. Uh, you know, even me, you know, who thinks of himself as anything of a toddler. Day. We are now getting our, and for the past three or four weeks, have been picking up our, you know, we're, we're not getting groceries delivered, but we're going to have somebody package them and bring them into the car. We're not going into the supermarket. And that is a change from what you were doing previously. That is a change from what we were doing previously in the past two or three weeks. I, you know, I mean, two or three weeks ago, when I saw these numbers developing, I called a number of friends who were 50 and said, I'm not to. Um, this is a time to change those behaviors. So you, if you're over 50 in particular, this is the time to stay home, you know, to read a couple of good books, to get a bunch of good books, um, you know, to do a project at home you always wanted to do, to file everything that needs to be filed. First, for this, this is a year where everybody can have their taxes done on, you know, like January 30th, um, you know, not be late on your taxes because you know, it's a good time to get them done early. It's always a great time to learn how to chant the Torah or to attend any of the many adult education opportunities. Exactly. So I, can, I can make plugs for programs too. So, you know, um, what do you anticipate is going to be our way out of this? Is it going to be people getting vaccinated? Is it actually closing down? Do you envision an actual lockdown? Uh, sort of like what we had back in, in March? Or are you thinking it's more like stay-at-home orders after a certain hour or only uh, delivery or, or um, curbside pickup for, for, for restaurants? Well, my guess is it will be progressive. And it will start with some simple stuff like stay at home, you know, like, well, we already have a curfew, but the curfew will get tighter. Um, and then gradually we will lose you know, people being in retail, um, you know, we'll lose things gradually and progressively and it'll have a different name because I think we're the way we're branding and marketing it, it's gonna be a little different. Um, but the end product I think will be in three or four weeks that we will be effectively locked down. Um, and that's not because anybody wants to go there. That's because that's the only, that's, that's really the only way to prevent the transmission of the disease. Now, if everybody in the state masked all the time, we could slow it markedly, uh, but we have not been effective in seeing that happen. Um, what do you think about vaccines? When do you think uh, should, should most people bank on getting them or uh, would doctors get them first and first responders? Or do you imagine the role that would be our seniors get them first or how do you imagine this unfolding? I think it will be doctors, nurses, hopefully nurses before doctors. They're more important, no offense, everybody. Um, but nurses and doctors and other healthcare workers and first responders first, um, and then uh, seniors and people with chronic disease, um, then adults and then children, um, something like that order. But remember, one of the challenges we have is that we don't have an organized approach to this so that we may say, you know, on this and this day, people who fit this category can be vaccinated, but we don't have a process that lets us know who everybody in that category is. And we don't have a process that will make sure everybody gets vaccinated. And that will slow our recovery um, because we can't uh, count on the disease transmission to fall off reliably until everybody is vaccinated, in fact. It seems like uh, we we are all recognizing that the government is taking these small steps. We're taking baby steps closer and closer to lockdown uh, or closer to something that looks like a lockdown. Um, I think the tenor of your voice and what you're describing is that we're in a really serious situation right now. And just because people aren't panicking and running around and, um, but this is a pretty serious situation and we want people to each do what they can 
to uh, minimize spread, not only to our loved ones and our friends, uh, but also to the greater community as well. Um, Bob from East Side of Providence asks, how do we know that the, how do we know that an mRNA dose does not manipulate or change our DNA? Is this a new type of technology or a new type of vaccine? Um, it is a new type of vaccine. Uh, there is a, an extensive testing process, um, but remember it's gonna take some time before the scientific community processes the data and we see what happens with a large enough number of people. The, uh, you know, there are good controls in place uh, to assure safety, but those controls get better and our knowledge gets better the more people who uh, get the vaccine. So in the phase three trial, there may, may be, I think it's 44,000 uh, people who have gotten the vaccine uh, and we will learn the side effects and uh, com complications for uh, side effects and problems that happen uh, with an incidence of 44,000 or less, one in 44,000 or less, but not about those complications or problems that happen at one in 100,000. That won't happen till we immunize 100,000 people. Um, so I think that until we immunize a million people, we won't have a really clear idea of what all the side effects are. Um, and, and everybody has to kind of know that up front that any vaccine, there are risks and benefits. Um, and clearly there are some individual risks and clearly there are both individual and community benefits um, when we get large numbers of people vaccinated. So I'm signing up for the vaccine to be part of the vaccine trial. Uh, as soon as made available to me, um, not because I'm in such a hurry to be vaccinated, but because I, part of my kind of social responsibility um, to, to try the vaccine and take some risk uh, and make sure that enough people are involved with testing it so that we can demonstrate its safety to everyone. Uh, do you believe people who have had, or is there any scientific uh, evidence that people who have had COVID um, somehow are immune or can't get a second uh, case of it? Well, there's some evidence that people have gotten uh, a case of a different variant or a mutant strain, um, but it's very limited. You know, I mean, it's a virus, so most people will get immune to it. As long as the virus is circulating, uh, that will help maintain the immunity of people who have it. Uh, but no immunity will last forever because it's also a coronavirus, so that immunity is likely to wane over time, but we'll understand the dynamics of that as we get more experience with the vaccine. This is going to take three to five years before we have a good, clear understanding of you know, how immunity works for this, vac for this disease um, and how effective the vaccine is and for how long. It looks like uh, in the, the two phase three trials that have either been completed or about to be completed, it looks like the mRNA vaccines are doing quite well in terms of the um, But again, you know, remember there are, I believe, 11 vaccines that are going to get to phase three trials. So, you know, we're going to have to look at each one and then compare them uh, and see what happens over time. And remember, somebody's got to make 7 billion doses of this thing. And that is not an easy process. Uh, how do people get the vaccine? I know you mentioned that the rollout might be first it's seniors, or first it's uh, first responders, then maybe it's seniors, then it's, um, do you just go through your uh, primary care physician? Are there trials or websites you register for? How does that rollout happen? And how was Rhode Island chosen to be among the four? Um, I don't know the answer to the last question. I just read it. Uh, and I don't think we know yet about how it's going to roll. Um, 
I think there is probably some planning going on inside the Department of Health. Uh, there are emergency management agencies for each town that are usually involved with the mass distribution of, of vaccines. Uh, but I, it, this, this process has not been publicly announced and, and I don't know it at the moment. Would you are you uh, would you advise that everybody go back to uh, telehealth appointments or try to conduct as much business through uh, th through Zoom or through FaceTime? Yeah, I think not only I mean for 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 medical stuff and for pretty much everything. Um, you know, I think starting now for the next at least twelve weeks, uh, I think we ought to plan on doing everything we can remotely. And is this just going to be the pattern for a while where it's going to be, we uh, try to contain spread in the community and we take more stringent measures, numbers go down, we open the valve and sort of open up society again a bit, uh, it, it grows. And then once again, it gets to be too much and then we have to, to dial it back. Well, I think that's yet to be seen. You know, I don't know how effective we're going to be at reducing spread this time. It is way more widely spread now than it was in the beginning of April. In the beginning of April, that's correct. Um, and so we're behind the eight ball. And I don't know for sure that we're gonna get it dialed back before the vaccine becomes available. So it may be that the vaccine is what terminates spread. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's my hope that we take a somewhat different approach this time. And if we are effective by reducing people's mobility, by reducing the spread of the virus, I think it's going to take many more weeks this time than it did last time for a number of reasons. Um, but if we are effective, I hope that we will not loosen up again until we have reduced community transmission to way lower than we did last time. Uh, we open things up uh, somewhere between five and ten to hundred thousand per day, um, and I'm not comfortable seeing us open up again unless we are below two new cases per hundred thousand per day. That's where the countries who have contained this well uh, got to, and that's where we, I think we need to get to before we open up. And, let, and if we open up too soon. We're going to get this happening again. I want to remind everyone if they want to ask questions to the good doctor, you can place them uh, here in the chat box. Um, what for you made the distinction of no longer going to the grocery store? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't think I understand. Sure. When you, you said you, before you were going to the grocery store and running errands, and now you're uh, getting food delivered. For you, what was what made you make that shift? seeing the numbers change. Um, you know, it became pretty clear to me that, you know, we hit, hit a certain point and the likelihood of the person I'm next to in the grocery having the disease increased markedly. Um, and so, you know, as I saw the numbers starting to go up, I said, okay, now is the time. You know, when we hit a certain point, you know, and that was probably once we hit something like 200 or 250 new cases per day. We're now at, we, today we were at 1,280. Um, so, you know, remember I've been looking at these numbers every single day since, since March. So I have the opportunity to see these patterns emerging. And, you know, and that's, uh, Rabbi, you know, that's, that's why I shared some of this with you and said, we ought to get a Zoom going earlier rather than later, um, so people can begin to understand. And you know, I think if you remember, I think we had the discussion two or three weeks ago, um, because I I was quite concerned by that point. We had looked at uh, having in-person programs and in, during this time of the year, and uh, Dr. Fine called me back and said, "Listen, the numbers are more complicated than we thought." Um, look, this story reminds me of. Uh, in, in the city of Sodom and Amora, look, I bring a rabbinic perspective, where they said, you know, uh, it was only illegal if you sold, so if sold something that was worth more than 
you know, five dollars. And so everybody would go around and they say they would steal an apple here or an orange there. And so nobody could be prosecuted. Nobody could do anything because everybody said, it's just me. I'm, it's only me. What kind of a difference can I make? And obviously the rabbis expand on this and they say, listen, all of us, I'm sure, want to go to the grocery store, grab a nice, grab an ice cream cone, uh, go and do these things. But every action we take has a, elevates our overall risk. And life is about balancing those risks and those gains. Um, Dr. Pine, what do you recommend if people do want to get together? Because you and I have always discussed, uh, we can't just stay in our homes forever. And to live a life as you want to be connected to your friends and be connected to family. Uh, how, what, what is the safest way of doing that? Is it, is it outdoors? Is it, um, is it indoors with masks? What would you recommend people do if they, if they say, I want to meet with my friend and only one friend, but I want to see them? Definitely outdoors. Um, and, you know, outdoors with masks, if that's reasonable. Um, and six feet apart or more. You know, eight feet is probably better than six feet. Uh, you know, I think those are, that's kind of the way I'd play it. Outside, mostly masked, at least six feet apart, eight feet's better. And I think it's, I think it is important to have that kind of contact. I don't mean to say that nobody should ever see anybody again. Um, I think that kind of human connection is the center of who we are. So I think it's working, worth working a little hard and also worth jumping on every, you know, sunny, bright, sunny day uh, for people to spend a little time together. Uh, I will say on the synagogue's side, uh, one of the things that we've tried to make a focus is how can we create as many Zoom experiences as possible, this compared to live stream experiences. Because uh, there's something powerful about uh, talking to other people, seeing other people, and to be candid, being seen by other people. And so as particularly as we enter December, January, February, the coldest, darkest times of the year, um, if we only focus on the things that we can't do, it can be extremely depressing. And I want us to recognize that there are lots of ways to see others and be seen and talk to people and make connections. Uh, and the synagogue is trying to provide those. And even if you say, I never went to Minion before, uh, we've retweaked how we do Minion. So it, there, there's learning, there's sharing, there's people connecting and talking. And so if anyone feels a little disconnected, there are ways of bridging the physical gap. Important. I'm gonna see if there's any other questions, uh, stand by. Are there any pre-existing medical conditions uh, that would make it unadvisable to get the vaccine? Or are there anything that prevent people that should caution people against it? Um, I think, you know, I, we've not seen enough data about the vaccine for me to completely answer that question. Um, but, you know, you quickly hear people say allergic reactions to similar vaccines would probably be a significant uh, risk. Um, and again, I think it will be, you know, we, we'll learn as, as the vaccine is disseminated uh, a little more about what they think the risks are now. Over time, I would guess that we will find some, uh, some diseases, conditions, or a history of allergy that predispose people to reactions because there will be more reactions as we use the vaccine more widely. Um, so the re recommendations will change. That doesn't mean the vaccine is a failure or that you should stay away from it. It just means that people should follow the direction. We will learn more about this vaccine that is, as it is more widely distributed. Uh, we've also recently heard that different school districts are closing and moving to uh, online or remote learning only. Do you anticipate that happening here in Providence? I expect it to happen statewide. Um, and I expect it to happen over the next two or three weeks. All right. For what do you see that it gives you optimism for the next couple of months? Well, the, you know, I mean, the optimism is that, you know, remember this is difficult, but not uh, devastating. You know, this is a cold virus and it's a small test of who we are together. Um, so, you know, the thing that gives me optimism is that we can learn to, to stand up to it, learn to control it, learn to defeat it. We know what it takes. 
Um, and I think we will have it under control again uh, by springtime. You know, I am pretty convinced that, you know, by May of next year, we will be able to move around much more because uh, the change in season seemed to help some last year. And I think that will probably happen again. Um, and what gives me optimism is how effective people have been at taking care of each other. Um, that is, you know, been our strength and will continue to be our strength. We have a little optimism that new leadership in Washington may let us take this, uh, this pandemic more seriously and address it with more rigor. Um, and that we will, and I have some optimism that uh, we won't argue so much about this, about science, um, that we can let the, we can sort of begin to follow the science again, instead of have it be the source of things again. I will ask you, I know that we're, we're approaching an hour mark and I'll just ask a few more questions. Do you think you need to wash your groceries or let it lie fallow for seven years before you can pick them up? Okay. Or the mail, for example. Yeah, well, and I don't think we should feed them to either the seven uh, lean cows or the seven fat cows. Um, I mean, I, th I think <coughs> all that doesn't hurt. I can't cite any evidence that it helps. It's one step a little more compulsive than I am. Um, but, you know, there's no harm in doing it. You know, whether it's necessary or not, I don't think we have... Uh, good scientific studies that let me draw that conclusion. Uh, you told that story of the mechanic who got sick. Um, do we know for how long the virus can stay in the air? Um, I don't think we know with certainty. Um, I think our sense is, you know, a number of hours, but not like a number of weeks. Um, and then finally, our last question for this evening. Uh, let's paint a rosy picture. The vaccine gets produced. Uh, it's effective. We somehow rally as a country and, and figure out a really streamlined um, way of, 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 get, of distributing the vaccine. Then what happens? Are we just done with this or what happens? Well, I think we have to wait and see. We don't know exactly how effective the vaccine is going to be. And we don't know how many of us are going to get it. There's some, some survey data it suggests 30 or 40% of us won't get it. And if that happens, then the time where we all have to be careful is much prolonged. Um, so I, I, I'd like to think that everyone will jump on board, uh, but my guess is we will have a couple of years of what I'll call COVID caution, where we are a little extra cautious until we are sure that the major transmission doesn't happen. We will still see, I suspect, outbreaks in nursing homes over the next few years. Um, it will take three to five years in my, estimation, in my estimation for us to get true herd immunity with or without a vaccine. So we'll have a number of years of caution. But I think we can go back to the movies. My guess is we'll be able to go back to the movies uh, in somewhere between nine months, nine and 18 months. So movies are not gone forever. Uh, more, and someday maybe I'll get to hear Bruce Springsteen in person. <laughs> and just because people I'm sure are already curious, high holidays for next year? Don't know yet. Um, okay. We, we, we kind of have to, to wait and see. Well, uh, Dr. Fine, thank you for spending this time with us. Uh, if you enjoyed tonight, uh, and Dr. Fine's presentation and style. Uh, you, you give a COVID update each and every day, yes? Yes, every day. Uh, do you want to mention where you can find that or hear that? Oh, sure. That's on uh, Go Local Providence. Most days it's at 1230. Tomorrow it's going to be at 2 after the governor's news conference. We're expecting the governor's news, news conference at 1, the governor to make some fairly substantial announcements about changes in the executive orders and rules and regs and so forth. Uh, and one final plug, I will mention aside from the many things, he chops wood, he davids, he reads Torah, he advises, 
uh, for health related issues in the greater community. Uh, Dr. Fine is also an author of several books. Uh, and actually, if you go on Amazon, you can purchase there uh, his newest book, The Bull and Other Stories. I'm telling you, he's like a, he's a renaissance man. Uh, is available on Amazon. So if you like the way he presents health information, you'll also enjoy his other writings as well. Uh, Dr. Fine, if everyone can give Dr. Fine a rounding applause or jazz hands, uh, or thank you for these uh, for this for these presentations. I think um, we watch all of this information on the news, uh, but when you have someone in your community who you know and who you trust and who you say, I know that person, I trust them, uh, it has a different kind of impact. Uh, Dr. Fine has agreed to give us an update about once a month uh, in December, January, and February. Uh, so you can check your bulletin to see the next times he'll present. Uh, and hopefully you can join us at other programs here at Temple Emmanuel on TETV uh, if you have any questions. Uh, I'll highlight one final thing on our homepage, which we've been updating. Uh, there's now a box very prominently on the center of the homepage that says if you or someone you know is in need uh, of either a pastoral check-in or someone to call or you say, you know, there's that guy I used to see at Shul, I don't see them anymore. Uh, you can click on that button and you can send us an email directly. Um, I can't say enough how helpful it is when congregants say, I haven't seen so-and-so in a while. Rabbi, can you check in on them? Or Cantor, can you just call so-and-so and check in? Uh, it is incredibly important for us to uh, reach, be more proactive and look out for each other and try to connect with each other. Uh, so if you can partner with us to help make help us uh, do that work, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, with that, thank you very much, Dr. Fine. Thank you all for being here and enjoy the rest of your night. Hopefully we'll see you on Friday night for Shabbat Chai at home. I'm actually going to the synagogue to go rehearse with Cantor Mayer and Rabbi Zarin. So I'll see you all later. Have a great night. Thank you all. Be safe and careful out there. Bye-bye.